reason by analogy. You can visualize what it means for vectors to be perpendicular. You can draw this picture. All right? So you might say to yourself, I should be able to visualize this. I should be able to sit in a quiet room, turn the lights off, and visualize what it means for complex exponentials to be orthogonal. Yes, yes, I see it. No, you don't. <laughs> Let me relieve you of this burden. There is no reason in hell <laughs> that you should be able to visualize when two functions, let alone complex exponentials, are orthogonal. Don't beat yourself up trying to do that. And don't, don't say to yourself, you're less of a person if you cannot visualize when two functions are perpendicular. Not only, not only complex exponentials, but sines and cosines, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of innocent looking functions out there that you have worked with for, for all of your life turn out to have this sort of orthogonal, orthogonality relationship. But you might say to yourself, like sines and cosines, so sine of t is orthogonal to cosine of t, you know, or sine, sine of 2 pi t is orthogonal to cosine 2 pi t. You know, all sorts of interesting results like that. But you, should, you might say to yourself, gee, if I look at the graph, I should be able to visualize this. Don't bother. All right? There's no point. There's no point. It's reasoning by analogy. All right? The fact is you establish these formulas, you establish they're orthogonal, and then you apply your intuition for orthogonal functions for, for orthogonal vectors where you can visualize it to situations where you can't visualize it. All right? And that's the real power of this line of reasoning because you can apply your intuition to places where it should have no business applying somehow. All right? All right, now.